welcome to this episode of the Shot from Adversity podcast. My name is Naus, and as usual, I'm going to be your host today. In today's episode, we're delving into the fascinating world of a special category of drugs that share a unique requirement. I'm sure you all have heard about mRNA or DNA-based drugs or even gen therapy-based drugs. Well, they all have a unique feature which makes them pretty special. They require deep cold storage until they are injected to the patient. And this is a challenge. And today we'll talk with the expert in the matter, Victoria de la Torre, to understand how is it and how this challenge can be overcome. Hi, Victoria. Nice to have you here again. Hi, Nils, and hi. hello to everyone in the audience. I'm very excited to be here to be talking about this topic. Great. So Victoria is Global Product Manager at Chad Pharma, and uh, she's currently in charge of the specialty product we'll be tackled in this session. So before maybe jumping into, into the topic, so to put everyone in context, we've said deep cold, what exactly is the range we are talking about? The temperature, more or less, that's that we are, you, we you are referring to. I think this can help to put everyone in the same range of temperatures. So every drug that it is stored at temperatures that are below zero degrees, so below temperatures from the normal freezers that we have in our home, can be defined as deep cold temperature. But usually on the pharmaceutical business, we are talking about drugs that are stored between minus 20 degrees up to minus 80 degrees. Then, of course, there is a range of drugs who require even colder storage, minus 100, minus 100 by 20, and that is what we call cryo storage. Okay, so we are in the range of minus 20 to minus 80 mm, exactly. uh, degrees Celsius. Great, so uh, it's getting cold to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for that. And I'm moving so to the really to the drug, to the molecules behind these um, this, uh, storage conditions. So what kind of drug platforms, or let's say technology platforms, are we talking about and are the main ones? Oh, the last years we all have heard about mRNA, DNA, gene therapy, and viral vector drugs, especially with the COVID pandemic. And all this drug has been a groundbreaking moment in the pharmaceutical or the healthcare industry. Not only because Thanks to that, we could fight a global pandemic that I should say it's the only one that all of us had ever lived, luckily, but also for the possibilities that these new therapies are bringing into how we're going to be treating different diseases. From commanding the cells to produce the antigens that will trigger the immune response to a certain disease, as the mRNA does, to introducing functional genes into the patient cells, for example, the DNA-based therapies, to carry therapeutic genes to certain target cells, like the viral vector vaccines, they are very adaptable. And the efficacy, they bring endless treatment opportunities. Usually, we all have known the traditional vaccines that use weakened or inactivated pathogens, but the mRNA vaccines introduce a small piece of genetic material into the cells. And the cells will automatically, by their own means, generate an immune response without causing the disease that the vaccine is trying to fight. Yeah, there is going to be, we are talking about that the pandemic was four years ago. So there has been an incredibly fast development of the mRNA vaccines that have demonstrated the potential to address infectious diseases fast, but also very effectively. Then we have the other two that of course are important, but they haven't had so much advertisement as mRNA. The first one is the DNA-based therapies that as I mentioned, they put a DNA sequence directly into the patient cells. And that is what it pushed the cells of the human body to develop therapeutic proteins. And this could help a lot to treat a various number of inherited diseases. 
And viral vectors and scenes, they are modified to carry the therapeutic genes or vaccines antigens instead of the harmful, harmful viral DNA, also to fight a disease that on the future the, the person, the human can have. Of course, it's expecting that the evolution of this type of drugs who had shown how successful they can be, will provide a safer but also more effective treatment for multiple number of diseases that we cannot mention here because they belong to so many therapeutic areas at the moment. Yeah, this is really amazing. Um, these uh, novel uh, developments and, and drugs that, that are coming up. And so, also in four years, Nils, that's incredible. Exactly, incredible so this has been an acceleration. Um, so I imagine that, okay, this, let's say, booming or really developing market as well uh, has its own uh, challenges with it. Uh, could you maybe, yeah, uh, tell us what's, what are those? And uh, yes, maybe you will learn later on how we can, um, yeah, uh, fight them. Of course. So we have all the challenges that are normal for any new type of drug development because this has not been tested. But the type of all the biological molecules that we are mentioned before, we have a very important challenge that is the storage of the drug. Specifically, as we are mentioning at the beginning of this podcast, the deep cold storage. The deep cold storage temperatures below zero, normally between minus 20 and minus 80 degrees, are required, are a must to slow the degradation process by enzymes and other factors and to preserve the drug effectiveness until point of use. If this uh, deep cold storage will not happen, or if it's damaged, or if there is a temperature change, it can be that later on the, the drug, the vaccine that you are injecting doesn't have any power on you because it has been damaged. And of course, in, as I was mentioning, in the last four years, even perhaps before that, we all have heard examples of the preconditions for the deep cold storage as infrastructure requirements, as a special supply chain logistics, the temperatures excursions, the problem of possible drug uh, wastage. Each one of these challenges, of course, has also sub-challenges because with them there is also the risk of breakage and the loss of container closure integrity that could lead to the leakage or the contamination of the drug itself. Which would be really bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so we've we've heard already about these challenges um, in um, yeah a couple of times already in the podcast and the webinars of the short film university, for example with Tom van Gineken, and um, so he introduced these challenges and the solution with the polymer professor ranges. So if I have you here today is for covering the the vials part, and especially the glass vials. So Victoria and. Um, how the glass vials tackle these challenges? So glass vials have been part of the pharmaceutical industry for decades, even if not longer. And they offer numerous benefits in pharmaceutical packaging, for storage, for administration, making them a preferred choice option for storing a wide range of drugs, including biological, biologics. Many pharmaceutical companies choose vials because they are easy to use. They have been used for this for a long time and they know their benefits. Between them, glass, of course, it's an inert material which ensures the stability and integrity of the drug that it's inside, preventing any contamination. Also, the material itself, glass, provides an effective barrier against gases, light, moisture, everything that could lead to the drug uh, degrade degradation. Glass vials are transparent in most of the cases, unless we are talking about amber vials, and they are very easy to inspect. So you could see if something is happening with the drug without need to open the vial. But we know all about these benefits, but considering the deep cold storage, we need to go one step further and we need to test which other benefit could have the glass vials 
for this kind of applications. And the first one that was mentioned before, it's the container closure integrity. We all know that securing the CCI in deep cold temperatures can be quite of a big challenge. And why is that? Because the stopper and the glass are made of two different materials. And the stopper, which is made usually from certain polymers, can go from flexible to brittle or shrinks with the risk of possible losing CCI, contamination, inactivation of the drug, leakage, and others. So we grab our type 1 glass files in different formats and also with different kind of stoppers. We close them, we put the stopper, we put the seal, and we put a BIOS at minus 80 degrees, also in a carbon dioxide enriched environment. To really, that will be the worst case situation to measure afterwards if there was any carbon dioxide inside the vial that could be affected by the drug. And we measure it at the beginning before putting it at minus 80, we measure it at 18 hours, and later on we measure even 24 hours, so a whole day in this temperature, in this very stressful environment. And the vials pass the test for all tested stops. So the result of this test was that not only CCI, but a residual sear force can be kept with type 1 glass vials at minus down to minus 80 degrees because also of course if you can keep it down to minus 80 you can also do it at minus 20 or minus 40. Sure okay I understood so we could say challenge number one container closure integrity known as CCI yes we manage um what else is out there that can really pose a challenge in this deep cold storage temperatures? The second one, and I will say could be even riskier, it's the risk of breakage. And here we are not talking about the risk of breakage during washing, during sterilization, during the filling of the vial, because there it's an empty vial. Here we are talking about the risk of breakage at very stressful conditions, like it's on the freezer at minus 80 degrees, that you are going perhaps to discover this when you need to use the drugs. And the risk of breakage is one of the main concerns uh, of pharmaceutical companies. Of course, they know that everything that happens on the fill and finish line, the glass to glass contact, the glass to metal contact against the machine, can generate defects on the outer surface of the vials. And these flaws under stress conditions could induce breakage. And which are these stress conditions? The high pressure of the frozen liquid inside the vials, inside the inner walls of the vial. The higher filling, of course, higher the filling, higher will be the pressure. Sucrose-based solutions that could crystallize at lower temperatures and put even more pressure in the vial, and the minus 80 degrees itself. So the magnitude of these conditions could accelerate or increase if the vials are pre-floor. They have critical surface defects, as mentioned above. So to mimic what happens during the fill and finish process of our customers, we choose to implement something that is called lab damage. Lab damage was also a topic of one of our former podcasts. So I invite all the, the audience to listen about it if you're interested. But what is doing the lab damage? Lab damage are mimicking defects. In this case, we were mimicking bump, bump checks that can happen in the field and finish line with the customer. So we compare a uh, top line ISO vials, so the vials with tighter cosmetic AQLs and with an improved cosmetic quality with our Everick Freeze vials. Shot Pharma Everick Freeze is one of the novel products, the most recent launch in the um, vials work. We implement the lab damage, we fill the vials with manitol solution and put them in storage conditions at minus 80 degrees. After certain times, uh, the vials were taken out, 
they were thawed until room temperature. They were examined to see if there was presence of cracks of breakage or defects. And we implement a burst pressure test to see how much pressure a via can sustain and survive. The result of this comparison, so I will call it normal top line vials versus our fabric freeze, show that there is a significant difference on the strength between both sets after lab damage and freezing, with an improved strength for the fabric freeze vials, and also, and very important, a lower risk of breakage for them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I see it, uh, the 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 uh, lab damage test introduced by Diana uh, some months ago has a real um, usage here for the Everick freeze. So you mentioned here this short Everick freeze vial. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit what are the main features of this vial and what makes it different compared to standard type one glass vials? That is a very nice question, Nels, because I was talking so much about the benefits that I forgot to talk about the basic, what is an Emmerich Freeze vial. So Emmerich Freeze, it's a vial that is produced with Violet's OS, optimized strength. Violet's OS, it's a type 1 glass that it has the same chemical composition that the well-known Violet's Clear. This will mean that in case that you want to use it, you don't need to re-register the vial but it has an anti-scratch outer coating and a tighter scratch and fissure specification. So we are starting the converting process with the best glass tube available. Then we also improve our conversion. And during the whole manufacturing, we ensure that there is glass to glass free handling with a special bottom inspection between other parameters. Tighter cosmetics IQLs and an increased wall thickness for deep coal applications while keeping the outer contour and the CCI relevant dimensions as ISO are the last characteristics of every freeze. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Um, and now we are approaching the end, uh, Victoria. Maybe to close this and now more specific. So what exactly is commercially available? So this, you said every freeze is now launch. Um, could you please pro provide us a glimpse on uh, the formats that are in the market? For sure. We are going to produce all formats between the 2 ml and the 30 ml. So it's, there's going to be a very big range of files with different kind of blowbacks and with short format standard packaging specification to keep glass to glass contact free even during transport. So formats 2 to 30, not only 30. That's the important part. Um, if there is one development or something that the customers are interested in, they can contact us. Uh, something perhaps I would like to add is that it's available at the moment in bulk, but can also be discussed the possibility as ready to use. Right. Thanks, Victoria was nice having you here. Thanks for sharing with us this um, very interesting information about the uh, deep cold, let's say, challenge and how to deal with it with the Everick Freeze vials. And I'd like to thank the audience for being here, for taking the time. I hope uh, this was very informative for you. For sure, feel free to check out one of our other podcasts or just join our uh, next from Obesity's webinar, which are upcoming. Yes, thank you and bye-bye. Thank you, bye.